something or other. Do I want to say anything? <laughs> Why would I want to say? I just said everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did, you did. <laughs> you had a... Uh... <laughs> the, the caption. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hey, <laughs> a couple of questions for you. Yeah. And of course, you're, you're Liz Reitzig. And yes. now tell us first, where are you from? I am from the States, right outside of D.C. Ah, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Okay. So, and, so when did you come and when are you going back? Yes. I got here on Sunday and spent the day at the farm and I'm flying out on Friday. Okay, so you won't be here on Monday? I will not be back on Monday for the rest of the hearing. For the history. Oh boy, okay. Well, you'll miss something. I will. I'll miss Michael's testimony. Exactly. Now, how do you feel about today? Or just a couple of details that maybe just come up? Wow, it was so powerful hearing from Elisa and Jonah and Marcus. Yes. Incredibly powerful. You could really feel what, what went into it for them, and Marcus's testimony especially made the entire courtroom cry. Yeah. It was so real and so yeah. true, and just speaking from his own experience and yeah. what, what the um, aggression against the farm has done for him and his As a child growing, growing up. up. Yeah. And his sisters also. Yes, and, and his so, most sincerest wish that this does not continue. That it has to stop. That it has to stop. And there's only one way to stop this, he said, which is discontinue the circular loop they're in yeah. and go in a straight line and, and move yeah. this forward. Yeah. Well, I wish you a good trip home. Thank you. And we'll let you know what happened. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to hearing about it, of course. All right, then, Liz. Thanks. Thanks. It is the third day after court. We just finished. Here are just a few of the documents that Elisa and Michael and Marcus have had to take into court with them. And here are Elisa and Michael. I just want to say before you guys start that today was incredibly powerful. Elisa started out with delivering wonderful submissions to the court and we ended with Marcus's delivery which left the entire courtroom in tears. And that was a little bit tough to recover from, but here we all are. And please take it away, Elisa. Tell us how the day went. So tired. <laughs> day went. Uh, it goes by fairly quickly, but it was good. Got through pretty much everything I wanted to. And uh, I think the judge has some work to do. He needs to figure out what's right and what's wrong. Yep. Yeah, that was. It's a bit of a conundrum, I think. 
that was obvious during the day that um, that was going on for the judge. Michael, you were there. You didn't speak today, but you were listening and you were watching really carefully. Is there anything you want to comment on? Oh, the only thing in both submissions, Marcus's and Elisa's uh, submissions, I could not have done it better. No, can I, you speak I, up I just, a little more? I could not have done it better than uh, what Alisa and uh, Marcus did. And uh, I think to recognize that actually, I, I wouldn't say female power, but the female energy in these proceedings is a really profound and necessary force in regards to change laws into moral and ethical laws which go beyond just um, regulatory regulations but we, we, I think we entered today on a completely different moral level and start arguing what is really at stake and that is the problem that the courts remove the moral aspect of law and just basically remove your humanity from ruling and what we could get from a jury is a true understanding of the human spirit involved in this battle okay so I think even if it doesn't do much in regard to the judge's ability to rule for or against an injunction but it raises an understanding that this battle has nothing to do with flouting the law or nothing to do that we want to evade the law. This has to do that people really take it serious what is their fundamental right in regards to their own body. And uh, even that uh, the minister, um, Jonah Evans, brought this element of um, spiritual development and um, I think even sacredness in and not specific um, in regards to what a certain church is preaching but in regards to this understanding that the courts cannot overwrite um, a religious freedom people should have in regards to deciding what they put in their body so I think it, it is expanding completely the argument now that it's not a regulatory offense this is an offense against humanity what is happening from the government. Well, and that was so clear from Marcus's from Marcus's submission today. So clear. Well, it, it is clear because he grew up with it as a small child with the threat of police and raids and so on. And he translated that now he that the third generation Fourth. is is still dealing with the same same thing without that one iota of development has happened on the side of the government who's sp supposed to govern you know govern and, and I say say that from the Constitution it is says it's guided by the supremacy of God I mean I want to bring that in by the supremacy of God okay the Creator and this is the guiding principle so to bring in a different element in this whole debate might it's getting a little windy can you make sure to talk loudly um, changing, you know, changing the energy in regards to where we need to go in that whole debate might bring changes from somewhere else we don't know yet. But, uh, well, let's hope. I think both of them, all three of them today, certainly changed the energy uh, profoundly. <laughs> Just to, to put it in perspective, that's only for this proceeding, okay? Well, these boxes don't divide us, they actually unite us. <laughs> Can you get a picture? Yeah, we spent so much time over there. Huh? 